face reading, chronic prostatitis. A chronic inflammation of the prostate gland caused by various factors. Chronic prostatitis is a common disease in neurology that includes chronic bacterial prostatitis and non-bacterial prostatitis. The clinical symptoms of chronic prostatitis are prostate pain, frequent urination, an urgent need to urinate, pain when urinating, a burning urethra, and cloudy urine, which may be accompanied by dizziness, tinnitus, insomnia, dreamy nights, anxiety and depression, and even impotence, and premature ejaculation. The causes of this condition include prostate congestion, urine irritation, pathogenic microorganism infection, anxiety, and depression. Face reading. Deep curved blood vessels in the outer canthal triangle area of the eye, small nodules in the angle of superior con concha zone of the ear suggest chronic prostatitis. Therapeutic methods. Symptoms of mild chronic prostatitis can be relieved through daily care. Dietary advice. Consume a light diet, avoid pungent and highly acidic foods, and don't drink liquor. Eat plenty of fruits, vegetables, and seeds. Exercise. Do exercises with your anus. Tighten the sphincter muscle and pull it up, then relax. Do this repeatedly to promote the circulation of chi and blood in the prostate to alleviate inflammation. Emotional adjustment. Patients should maintain a balanced state of mind, understand the condition of chronic prostatitis, and avoid excessive worry. Maintain a positive mood, mood develop a positive attitude toward the treatment, and actively cooperate in it. Massage. The Hui Yang point dissipates water and dampness, replenishes yang, and nourishes qi. Curve your fingers to loosely form a hollowed fist with both hands. Use the prominent joints of the thumb to knee press the Hui Yang point with both hands at the same time. Apply enough force to make the acupoint feel the distension. Do this twice a day for five minutes each time. Massaging this point often has good effects on diarrhea, bloody stool, hemorrhoids, impotence, and prostatitis. Thank you for your attention. Interviewing when emotions become causes of disease for. The way that all emotions afflict the heart also explains why a red tip of the tongue Indicating heart fire is so commonly seen even in emotional problems related to other organs. The first effect of emotional stress on the body is to impair the proper circulation and direction of chi. Chi is non-substantial, and the mind, when its mental and emotional energies, is the most non-material type of chi. It is therefore natural that emotional stress affecting the mind impairs the circulation of chi first of all. Each emotion is said to have particular effect on the circulation of chi. The simple questions in chapter 39 says, anger makes chi rise, joy slows down chi, sadness dissolves chi, fear makes chi descend, shock scatters chi, pensiveness knots chi. Dr. Chen Yen, in a treatise on the three categories, 1174 says, Joy scatters, anger arouses, worry makes chi and smooth, pensiveness nods, sadness makes chi tight, fear sinks, and shock moves. Again, this should not be taken too literally, as in certain cases, Emotional pressure may have an effect on chi, dif on chi different from the one outlined above. For example, fear is said to make chi descend and may cause inuresis, inco incontinence of urine or diarrhea, 
as the kidneys control the two lower orifices, urethra and anus. This is certainly true in cases of extreme and sudden fear, which may cause incontinence of urine or diarrhea. Or in the case of children, when anxiety about a certain family situation may cause may cause inuresis. Inuresis. However, the effect of fear on chi also depends on the state of the heart. If the heart is strong, it will cause chi to descend. But if the heart is weak, it will cause chi to rise in the form of empty heat. This is more common in old people and women. In such cases, fear and anxiety may weaken kidney yin and give rise to the empty heat of the heart, which such symptoms as palpitations, insomnia, night sweating, a dry mouth, red face, and a rapid pulse. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss Han Yang Min, Large Intestine Meridian, Great Bone. LI 16 at the depression between the acromial end of the clav clavicle and the upper part of the spine of the scapula. LI 16, the great bone, giant bone, point of the young Chiao Mai. From LI 16, the meridian travels across the trapezius muscles to the posterior mid uh, median line at the base of the seven cervical vertebra. Do 14. From here, it crosses back over the shoulder to the supraclavicular fossa, stomach 12, where it divides. The point name comes from its location. This name is also an ancient reference to the clavicle. Great bone moves the chi and blood. Yang mean is rich in blood and chi and irrigates the channel. Frequently used with LI15 for local channel problems of the shoulder particularly for chronic cases and when it is tender upon palpation. Subdues ascending rebellious chi, connection with stomach and through yang min and through yang chiao mai. Opens the chest and stimulate the descending of lung chi so it can be used for breath breathlessness, cough, or asthma. From the supraclavicular fossa, a deep branch of the LI passes through the chest and lungs, through the diaphragm and abdomen. Said to be good for fear in children. If the young mean is impaired due to poor childhood nutrition, then the shen may be disturbed. This point, uh, through its young chow mai connection and through the branch of the pathway which passes through the chest, Bringing chi and blood to the upper jaw can restore calm and good regulation. Benefits the joints. Indication, local problems of the shoulder, impaired descending function of the lung, giving rise to asthma or breathlessness, headache. For shoulder problems can be used together with LI-15, consider using Moxa here. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss heart patterns, obstruction of the heart vessel. This disease is mostly due to blood stasis, retention of phlegm, cold coagulation or stagnation of chi, all of which blocks the heart vessel. Clinical manifestation, palpitation, a suffocating feeling and pain in the chest, radiating to the shoulder, back and the inner aspect of the arm, the pain is sometimes present and sometimes not. In cases with stabbing pain, dark tongue with blue and purple spots, and a thready and choppy pulse, knotted or intermittent pulse, this pertains to blood stasis in the heart vessel. In cases of obesity with excessive phlegm, heaviness of the body, suffocating pain, white greasy coating and deep and slippery or deep and choppy pulse, this refers to the retention of phlegm in the heart vessel. In cases with sudden attack of severe pain, which can be relieved by warm, cold limbs or a pale tongue with a white coating and a deep and slow or deep and tense pulse, this indicates stagnation of cold or cold coagulation obstructing the heart vessel. 
in cases with distending pain, rib side distension, frequent sighing with the attacks of being often related to emotional factors, a pale red tongue with a thin and white tongue coating, and a wiry bowstring pulse. This refers to the chi stagnation of the heart vessel. Analysis, this disease may be derived from other heart patterns, particularly heart young deficiency, so the symptoms vary according to the different pathogenic factors. The pathogenesis of this disease is divided into four patterns. Blood stasis, cold coagulation and retention of phlegm, stagnation of chi, all of which obstruct the heart, heart vessels. <clears> the <throat> symptoms, palpitation, a suffocating feeling and pain in the chest, radiating to the shoulder, back, and the inner aspect of the arm, accompanied by symptoms of other heart patterns, which can obstruct the heart vessels. This pattern may be simply caused by blood stasis or a pathogenic cold pathogen. However, pathogenic factors mostly exist in combination, such as chi stagnation combines with blood stasis, chi stagnation with phlegm retention, and chi stagnation with blood stasis and phlegm, phlegm retention. <clears throat> Cold obstruction combines with chi stagnation and blood stasis, etc. Phlegm retention is usually accompanied by blood stasis. Therefore, only when the main symptoms of different patterns are precisely differentiated, then an accurate diagnosis will be made. So here, the analysis of heart vessel obstruction, when there is heart young, fails to rose and warm the heart, there is palpitation. The heart chi fails to move the blood and heart vessels are blocked, uh, suffocating feeling and pain in the chest. Impediment of chi of the heart, channel of the hand, xiao yin. There is pain radiating to the left arm, shoulder, and back. There is static blood blocking the heart vessel. There is stabbing pain with blood stasis. When there is uh, phlegm retention blocking the heart vessel, there is suffocating pain with phlegm retention pattern. When there is cold coagulating blocking the heart vessel, uh, there is sudden severe pain which can be relieved by warm. When there's static chi blocking the heart vessel, there is distending pain related to the emotions and usually accompanied by chi stagnation symptoms. <clears throat> For the treatment principle, invigorate heart chi and blood, transform phlegm, expel cold, and calm the shen. For the acupuncture points, choose from uh, pericardium 5, Pericardium 6, Heart 5, REN 14, REN 15, REN 17, UB 14, UB 15, UB 17, Splint 10, Stomach 40. Needle uh, technique, spreading technique. Explanation, Heart 5, PC 6, REN 14, REN 15, UB 14, UB 15, Invigorate Heart Chi and Heart Blood. Screen 10 and uh, UB17 in big great blood. REN17 circulate chi and blood in the upper jaw. Pericardium 5 and stomach 40 transform phlegm and move chi in the chest. <coughs> Relevant advice like physical activity will be beneficial. However, it is important that the person does not overexert themselves if there is an underlying deficient pattern. Beating the chest and upper back with a loose fist or a wooden spoon or rolling the shoulders and swinging the arms can also be recommended as well as getting adequate exercise. It is also important that they get sufficient rest and relaxation. They should avoid stress and overexerting themselves physically. They can play sports. It is important that they do not expose themselves to the cold when they sweat. They should avoid foods that create dampness and phlegm. Here, the table of uh, differentiation of various pathological factors in the obstruction of the heart vessel. For the disease, obstruction of the heart vessel, the symptoms, palpitation, a suffocating feeling and pain in the chest, 
radiating to the shoulder, back, and the inner aspect of the arm, pain comes and goes. For the pattern, uh, blood stasis, the characteristic of symptoms, there is dark tongue with blue and purple spots and a pretty and choppy paws. For the pattern of phlegm retention, the characteristic of symptoms, excessive phlegm, heaviness of the body, suffocating pain, while greasy, white greasy coating, a deep and slippery pulse. For the cold obstruction, the symptoms, there is sudden attack of severe pain, which can be relieved by warm, cold limbs, pale tongue with a white coating, and a deep and slow or deep and tense pulse. For chest stagnation, the symptoms, the, there is distending pain, which is related to emotional factors, pale red tongue, and a wiry pulse. Thank you for your attention. Pulse taking, long pulse. The long pulse may be normal or abnormal. If the pulse is long and gently elastic, it is normal and indicates ample chi and blood and free movement of meridian chi. If it is long and taut, it is subnormal and indicates strong evil chi. The most common causes are liver fire, adverse chi flow, phlegm heat, epilepsy, hernia, and constipation. In a healthy person, genuine chi is ample and all the meridians are unimpeded. That produces a long and gently elastic pulse. But if there is liver fire, turbid phlegm, endogenous heat, or adverse chi movement, then blood flow may be accelerated and the vessels are beyond normally full. That produces a long and taut pulse. A pulse which is neither big nor small, but feels long, soft, and calm like the end of a bamboo shoot is a long pulse and it this in this state indicates health. A pulse which comes like a tightly stretched string without softness or emptiness, firm and hard like a stick of bamboo, is a long pulse indicating disease. The long pulse always extends past the tsun and sure positions, but is not as tight and wiry as the wiry pulse. The normal long pulse indicates the presence of strong upright chi. In disease, the long pulse indicates toxic yang causing heat in the blood, wind phlegm causing epilepsy, or excessive internal heat in yang ming, mainly in the stomach and large intestine food. Thank you for your attention. Diagnosis according to Zhang for organ patterns. This time we discuss liver fire, generating liver wind. The extreme heat generated by liver fire can be so intense that it can generate wind. The etiology is the same as for liver fire. Symptoms and signs, dizziness, tremors, muscle spasms, hemilateral throbbing headache, red eyes, irritability, irritability and anger, tinnitus, acute deafness, thirst, bitter taste, dark urine, constipation, bleeding, violent dreams and nightmares, restless sleep, fixed and staring eyes. Shouting quality to the voice, loud voice, red tongue that is stiff and motionless, possibly veering to one side, the tongue will have a dry and yellowish coating, rapid wiry pulse, key symptoms, tremors and spasms, hemilateral throbbing headache, irritability, bitter taste, rapid and wiry pulse. Treatment principle, calm liver wind and drain liver fire. Acupuncture points we choose from liver 2, 3, do 8, 14, 16, 20, GB20, and GB43. Needle technique is draining. Liver 2, 3, and do 8, calm the liver, drain heat from the liver, and extinguish liver wind. Do 14 drains fire and extinguishes internally generated wind. Do 16, GB20, and do 20, extinguish internally generated wind, especially when the symptoms manifest in the head. GB43 drains liver fire. Liver fire generating liver wind can be caused by liver fire and can result in phlegm wind. To summarize, the etiology of liver fire generating wind includes long-standing anger, resentment, frustration, excessive alcohol, sweet fatty foods, red meat. 
underlying accompanying pathology, stagnation of liver chi transforming into liver fire. Signs and symptoms, tremor, irritability, easily angered, sudden onset deafness and or tinnitus, temporal headache, dizziness, red face and eyes, thirst, bitter taste, dream disturbed sleep, constipation, dark yellow urine, nosebleed, vomiting blood, coughing blood. Pulse, wiry and rapid. Tongue is red with redder sides, dry yellow coating. Treatment principle, clear liver. Drain fire, cool blood, extinguish wind. Acupuncture treatment, liver two, clears liver fire. Liver three, courses the liver. GB20, subdues ascending liver chi, as well as GB13. Extra point, Tai Young, clears liver fire. LI11, subdues ascending liver chi. GB1 benefits the eyes and clears heat. GB8 benefits the head, alleviates pain. GB6 extinguishes wind, clears heat. Do24 extinguishes wind, calms the shen. Spleen 6 harmonizes liver, calms the shen. Liver 1 clears heat from the blood. 2 8 suits the liver, extinguishes wind. Thank you for your attention. Heal on tongue form inspection, we discuss hairy, fissured, and indented tongues. In some conditions, the tongue may be covered with filaments or polyps so that the tongue resembles a strawberry. The polyps may be red, white, or black, whereas the filaments are mostly black or red. Filaments and polyps may appear on the sides and tip of the tongue or spread over the entire tongue. Their presence suggests toxic effect of intense heat, sustained heat in the heart or in the nutritive and blood levels, or dampness heat in the blood level of the warm illnesses. Fissured tongue. Fissures may be seen over the entire tongue or confined to specific areas, front, sides, or tip. They may be oriented in various directions and may be of various shapes or depths. The deeper ones may resemble cuts. Fissures are seen mainly in conditions of deficiency, especially of blood or yin, but also in conditions of severe heat. In all these cases, the tongue loses its nourishment and the tongue surface shrinks. A pale fissured tongue suggests blood deficiency. A red or crimson fissured tongue suggests strong heat consuming and depleting fluids. Also, about 1 in 200 normal persons have congenital fissures. In such persons, the fissures are covered by normal tongue coating, and there is no symptom of illness. This must be distinguished from abnormal fissures. Indented tongue. An indented tongue is one that shows depressions on the sides due to pressure from the teeth. Such indentations are mostly seen in conditions of spleen insufficiency with impaired transportation so that fluids and dampness accumulate and collect in the tongue. The plump tongue is then pressed against the teeth. Thus, indentation and plumpness tend to occur together. A pale and moist tongue with indentation suggests accumulation of cold and dampness or excess water due to yang deficiency. A reddish tongue with indentation suggests spleen insufficiency or qi deficiency. A red and swollen tongue with indentations suggests phlegm accumulation due to dampness heat. Thank you for your attention. We discuss epigastric pain due to spleen yin deficiency. When we study the pathology of the internal organs for the spleen, we generally emphasize spleen chi and spleen yang deficiency. This is understandable as these two patterns are indeed extremely common. By contrast, when it comes to the stomach, we do mention stomach yin deficiency. In fact, some people say that this is a well-known contradiction. The stomach is a yang organ, but it suffers from yin deficiency. While the spleen is a yin organ, but it suffers from yang deficiency. Although we nowadays emphasize spleen yang deficiency, some of the old classics did often mention spleen yin deficiency. For example, the Su Huen in chapter 3 says that the excessive use of bitter foods or herbs causes spleen qi not to be immersed. Modern doctors interpret spleen chi not immersed as spleen yin deficiency. Dr. Wang Lunti 
Ming Dynasty said that stomach fire may injure spleen yin. Qin Ji Chen says in Causes of Disease and Treatment, according to the pulse, the spleen may be deficient in yang or yin. In spleen yin deficiency, there is deficiency of spleen blood and empty heat arises. Tang Chong Hai, author of uh, Discussion on Blood Patterns, bemoaned the fact that since Li Tong Yuan, author of Discussion on Stomach and Spleen, doctors paid attention to spleen yang but not spleen yin. The etiology of spleen yin deficiency is clearly dietary. It is caused by irregular eating, that is, eating in a hurry, eating standing up, eating while working at one's computer, eating late at night, eating while discussing business, eating while in a state of worry, etc. However, besides the dietary causes, spleen yin deficiency may also be caused by emotional stress related to worry and pensiveness and by excessive physical work that depletes the spleen. The main clinical manifestations of spleen deficiency are poor appetite, distension after eating, dry stools, dry mouth and throat, dry lips, thin body, dull complexion without luster, night sweating, five palm heat only if there is empty heat, bleeding in small quantity, tongue without coating, red if there is empty heat, fine pulse. Please note that empty heat does derive from yin deficiency, but someone may have yin deficiency for years before empty heat develops. The tongue is in fact the best clinical sign to distinguish when yin deficiency has given rise to empty heat. If the tongue lacks a coating but it is not red, there is yin deficiency without empty heat. If the tongue lacks a coating and it is red, then there is yin deficiency and empty heat. The spleen controls yun wa, that is, transportation and transformation of food essences. Yun wa is impaired not only when spleen yang is deficient, but also when spleen yin is deficient, hence the lack of appetite. The yin deficiency causes loss of weight and therefore a thin body. Spleen yin includes blood and yin, and for this reason, spleen yin deficiency may cause bleeding such as in the stools, vomit, or under the skin. Please note that the sign of uh, dry lips, as this is quite a key sign, of spleen yin deficiency. So this is the tongue picture of uh, spleen yin deficiency without empty heat. There is no coating, but the color is normal. Spleen yin deficiency with empty heat. No coating, red colored tongue. Thank you for your attention.